and be glad in it. Amen. Come on. Whether the sun will shine, whether the skies will rain, and only you are good. This is the day you may. Whether in life or death, whether in joy or pain, I know this truth remains. This is the day you may. Come on, church. This is the day that the Lord has. You will protect my way. Your every work is good. This is the day you made. I am a child of yours. You are the one who saves. I am redeemed by love. This is the day you made. Come on. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice as we live. Sing it. Father, we praise you this morning, Lord. We thank you for your blessed son, Jesus. We know that your spirit is here with us, opening up our eyes to your presence. And this morning in everything that we do, we ask that you would be high and lifted up in our hearts and in our minds. Lord, you are the King of kings and Lord of lords, and you are ruling and reigning now. And we praise you for that. God, be magnified in our service, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, why don't you guys find someone you don't know and say hi to them. There's someone, I know you can do it. Don't act like you can't.
Is this thing on? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. How are we doing? <laughs> if uh, everyone wa wants to make their way back to their seating positions, we'll get started. Um, It's okay, I'm not ready either. <laughs> Got a, a ton of announcements this morning, um, so not prepared. But hopefully I'll get you guys the correct information and you can go from there. Um, so first of all, if there's any first time visitors, second time visitors, maybe you've been here for years. Uh, and you haven't filled out a visitor card, you can still do that. Um, there'll be, it's in the pocket in front of you, um, in front of your chair. You can take it through the double doors, drop it in the prayer box, and uh, somebody can reach out to you uh, to help you feel more included in the church. And uh, so, let's see, we got some announcements. Some have changed, some are still the same as last week. Um, we'll start with this one, so just, you know, bear with me here. <laughs> um, so this is uh, Mark's, Mark's bear, if you can't tell. Uh, it's a little hammer. I guess they call Mark the hammer. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so the, this has been made for anybody, well, they will make you one of these if you are going through a hard time um, and need some cuddle comfort. So um, I will go ahead and read what kind of this is a little bit about. Um, so first of all, it's a bear of a cut, whoops. It's a bear of a cuddly sort. Second, it's a bear with a very special mission to bring joy and peace and a smile to the face of someone you love. Each bear comes with its own quilted blanket, handmade by, our, by ladies in our church. The bears come in different shapes, colors, and sizes, but all have a special mission to spread the love of Jesus. Each burden bear shows you care and reminds the recipient that God does too. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, casting all your cares on him, for he cares for you. Would you like, if you'd like more information, uh, See, would you like to send a I'll just read this. Would you like more information? Would you like to send a burden bear to someone who's struggling? Uh, contact Debbie. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to try. 208-329-9116. So... Um, all right, there, uh, so for those of us who knew uh, Carolee Shaw um, and anyone else who wants to attend, there will be a memorial service for Carolee. Um, that is on May 4th, Saturday, 10 a.m. And if you'd like to attend and you want to provide a side dish, uh, you can do so. And for more information, uh, you can contact uh, Michelle. She's with the Java Gems. So yeah, any more questions uh, on that, you can contact her. All right, let's see. Okay, so VBS is coming up. Uh, it's, let's see. The main memory verse is, little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. John 4.4. 4. And the dates for this is June 3 through 6. Um, be praying about how you would like to be involved. Uh, Sign-up lists are on the kids' check-in table in the foyer. And this year, we have a donation registry on Amazon. Hop online to see how you can support this amazing ministry. And please see um, Dana, Danae, sorry. I knew I was going to get that wrong. With any questions, um, our biggest need is we would like to have a super superhero capes for all the kids. And we need lots of cardboard boxes.
boxes, large cardboard boxes. Um, okay. Ladies, ladies tea. Again, not invited, so me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. Uh, we'll see about that. I'll pray about that. <laughs> Uh, so register for the ladies' tea by next Sunday. Uh, no money is due at this time. Register is online, but Kathy can help you if you need to sign up. Um, more, info, more info is available in foyer. I did see the booth. It's very nice, and there is a lot of info. So if you need more, go there. Um, also, Senator Glen, Glenetta? Glen okay. We'll be joining and we'll be sharing briefly about the upcoming elections. Uh, okay, there will also be a silent auction and a program for little girls too. Fun for all ages, so invite your friends and neighbors. This is a wonderful community outreach. Uh, also, they'll need silent auction items donated. Uh, guidelines for this are on the ladies' tea table display in the foyer. All right. We talked about this one last week. Uh, it's the Messianic Passover. Um, still, let's see, uh, Bible, Beale Bible Church will be hosting that Thursday. So it's Thursday the 18th at 6 p.m. Sign up as soon as possible so you know how much food to prepare. Uh, okay. Think, okay, so last one. This one's kind of changed a little bit. So um, it's the, the Whosoever's Bible Study. Um, studying the biblical foundation of G who Jesus is through the book of John. The only change uh, to pay attention to is this will now be moving from April 9th at 6 p.m. Uh, on Tuesdays to April 15th on Mondays. Uh, sign up is still in the lobby. Uh, okay. I did it. I think that's it. All right. Cool. Enjoy the rest of the service. We're now going to have an awkward transition while we go back to worship. That wasn't too bad. All right. Well, let's pray before we uh, go into worship. We're also going to receive communion this morning. And uh, if you are able to and you want to stand with us, please stand with us this morning. If you want to remain seated for worship, that's okay, too. We're going to worship together. Father, we thank you so much for this day, this day that you have made. And God, I pray as we transition into praise, that your spirit would open up our eyes to your presence in this place. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the blood that was shed for us on the cross as we celebrate that today. And as we sing, may you be glorified through our voices. May you be glorified in this place. In Jesus' name. sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from every fear those who look on him are radiant they never be ashamed they'll never be ashamed this poor man cried, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from my enemies. The Son of God surrounds his face, he will deliver me. 
One more time, come on. Let us every day and night, never in praise. May our incense This morning we have uh, opportunity to receive the Lord's Supper. So the deacons are going to come forward. They're going to pass out the implements. And I invite you to hold on to those. We'll partake together uh, after the next worship song. Uh, let me read to you the, Paul's instruction to us. 
1 Corinthians 11.23, Paul writes, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming the Lord's death until he come. Now our instruction in verse 27, Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup in an unworthy manner will be guilty concerning the body and the blood of the Lord. So let a person examine himself and then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. This is why many are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we judged ourselves truly, we would not be judged. So as we prepare our hearts to receive, I invite you to take this time uh, to spend in, uh, in meditation and pursuit of those things perhaps in your life that uh, you need to lay down before the Lord, that you are in right standing with God. Uh, if there's something that needs confessed, confess it between you and he. And, uh, and be cleansed. Let your heart be prepared, and we will partake together uh, after this song. So I invite you during this time to examine yourself as Scripture calls us to. Thank you.
pray together over the bread. Father God, we thank you so much on that evening when you lifted up the bread and you said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we, we love you. And we thank you for that which you have given for us. We ask that you would bless this time as we gather together to celebrate uh, that what you have done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's partake together. Let's pray over the cup. <clears throat> Father God, we again come to you and we give you thanks and praise for that cup, the cup of redemption in the Passover meal that you lifted up and then you made the declaration, you said, now I'm not going to drink of the fruit of this vine again until I have it together with you in my Father's kingdom. The fourth cup in the Passover meal is the cup of praise. And there will be a day we will celebrate all of this together with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But until then, we thank you for your act of redemption that you have accomplished for us. We thank you for your blood shed for the redemption of sin. And we give you all the praise and all the glory you so richly deserve. And in doing this, we remember you till you come. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's partake together. him together.
ransomed church of God. Be he saved to sin no Your goodness is running after, 
23, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And surely that is the testimony of every single one of us sitting in this room. No matter what it is that we're going through in life, goodness and mercy is following us through Christ. As Paul said, to live is Christ, to die is gain. What can the world and the devil take away from the precious saints of God? Nothing. Nothing. We worship you this morning, Lord. We thank you. As we transition into a time of prayer now, let us examine our hearts. Let us take a moment to get our hearts in a place of repentance before God. So this is the week following Easter Sunday, which no matter what the world calls it, we're going to call it Resurrection Sunday. It's just the day we are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord, but we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord every day we wake up. So our response to that is, what now that Jesus has rose from the grave? And Luke 24, 46 through 49 says, he told them, this is what was written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead and on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I'm going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Let our response to the resurrection be the same as Paul's. As he said in 1 Timothy, here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. We can all put our name in there. Job also said, my ears have heard of you, but now my eyes have seen you. Therefore, I despise myself and I repent in dust and ashes. So this morning, let's take a minute. This isn't a time of, of, of uh, confessing your sins out loud to everybody, but let's take a minute between you and the Lord and repent. You know, repentance means turning and going the opposite way, not just stopping, but going the other way. So let's take a few minutes, you and the Lord. Take a moment, and if you feel, feel it on your heart to uh, pray for the nation, let's uh, specifically put our prayers in that direction as we ask, as God's people, for repentance of our nation.
Father, we repent. <clears throat> we repent this morning. Lord, we... Your word tells us to not be anxious about anything, Lord. We ask that your spirit would help us this morning to not be anxious as we, in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make these requests known to you, Lord. We don't, we don't need uh, the, the news or some guy telling us about the moon to know that America's in trouble. We have your word, and we've neglected it. And we as your people are coming before you humbly to ask. In light of you being risen from the grave, that you would resurrect the dead things throughout our land. That you would heal our streets and land. It says in Luke 24, 52 through 53, that they worshipped him when they saw the risen Jesus. And they returned with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple praising God. Lord, may the churches in this country be filled with people praising you. May we learn to turn the TV off and come to the temple of God and sing to you. Fill the prayer meetings, fill the worship, fill the churches as we repent in dust and ashes. Lord, when you came out of the grave and returned and talked to your disciples and Mary and others, your, all through the Gospels, your instruction, your first instructions were to tell us to go, to go out into the darkness, to go out into the evil that surrounds us, Lord. And with and the help of your Holy Spirit that you gave us, you told us to go out and make a difference. Lord, we pray that as we have celebrated the resurrection, that now we can respond to your Holy Spirit. Lord, we have such a privilege we know that light will always dispel darkness. And although the, the world is full of it now, we know and we believe in the promise, the promise that you will restore light. 
So Lord, as we take a minute now, we ask that you would open doors as we go out into the world. Make us sensitive to your voice. Give us opportunity. We have so many opportunities to share the good news in our workplaces, in our families. Lord, just right now, quicken our spirits and give us opportunity to go. And Lord, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that you've given us. Yes, Lord. Lord, and as we go out of this place today, we remember Isaiah that said, Behold, I am doing a new thing. I will make a way in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord. Let's end our
pray this morning with this chorus. Sing this with me. <clears throat> Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of We ask that you would fill us with your spirit, that our flesh, the world, and the devil would be cast down in Jesus' name. We thank you for your grace, God, in Jesus' name. Good morning, church. I'm going to be, I'm going to be reading uh, Galatians 5. To be honest, it's a very marked up verse in my Bible and very convicting, so we'll see how I do here. For freedom Christ, for freedom Christ has set us, set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. Now I, Paul, say to you that if you receive circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. I testify again to every man who receives circumcision that he is bound to keep the whole law. You were severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is of any avail, but faith working through love. You were running well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion is not from him who called you. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. I have confidence in the Lord that you will take, that you will, you will take no other view than mine. And he who is troubling you will bear his judgment, whoever he is. But if I, brethren, still preach circumcision, why am I still persecuted? In that case, the stumbling block of the cross has been removed. I wish those who unsettle you would mutilate themselves. For you were called to freedom, brethren. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love be servants of one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, take heed that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit and the de desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For those who oppose to, for, for these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you would but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of the flesh are plain immorality impurity licentiousness idolatry sorcery enmity strife jealousy anger selfishness dissension party spirit envy drunkenness carousing and the like I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Let us know... No, let no self-conceit, no provoking of one another, no envy of, of one another. And let's pray. Uh, dear Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for, for your word and this convicting portion of scripture that is in Galatians. Uh, and I just pray you lead us by the Holy Spirit as a church to turn from these sins if we have them and seek you and by the blood of Jesus who died to cleanse us of all of these. And I just pray, Father God, you uh, guide Jackie today through your Holy Spirit uh, to impart this message to us all and that we may receive it in our hearts with uh, thanksgiving. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Whew. 
All right. <clears throat> Little ones are free, but not yet. So before you guys run out, it's Drew's birthday. Where are you at, Drew? Oh, no. Yes, it's you. So Drew needs to stand up. Come on, Drew. Drew, he's our brother. <clears throat> it's Drew's birthday. So as the kids are on their way out to Sunday school, we're going to sing them happy birthday, okay? Happy birthday to you. All right, you, you don't have to stand up anymore. <laughs> we do have cake. There will be cake after church. So if you're wondering to yourself, why is there cake going around? It's Drew's birthday cake. You're all invited to have some. And it's a pizza with the pastor. So <clears throat> we'll, you'll get a chance to grab a slice of pizza and have a piece of cake. So um, hopefully that will be a blessing to everybody. I know it will be a blessing to me. So, um, uh, right before we jump in, I want to give a couple of quick updates. One is, uh, many of you may remember, we, br we brought Grant up uh, two weeks ago to pray for him. He had surgery the day after Easter, and he's here with us today, so we want to praise God. So, they're still waiting on a couple of tests in regard to his cancer, but uh, we need to continue to pray for God's deliverance. Also, our brother Chris Sutton, still in battle with cancer, Ruth Wells, uh, Victor as well. Make sure we're keeping uh, each of these lifted up in prayer. I don't want you to forget about the, the sick. And if you have the prayer um, part of your app, you, it's a little easier to keep track of. The One more before I, I start uh, with the message, uh, we're going to put baby Judah up. So baby Judah's back in the hospital again. He did nine days, was it uh, two weeks ago? And then uh, he got sick again. He's on his third day. He, for whatever reason, there really, there's not really a lot of answers. He's not absorbing oxygen. So, um, so Destiny and Tommy are pretty much living in the hospital again. So I just want to take a minute to pray for baby Judah, let you guys know what's going on with baby Judah so you can keep him in your prayers as well and uh, we can get him back home. All right, let's go before the Lord. Father God, we are so thankful for your touch in Grant's life, for your healing and the, the work that you're doing in uh, him physically. Lord, we pray that you would deliver him from cancer, that the tests that come back would all be negative and and we have a clear sailing before us, Lord. And we pray that for every one of those who are struggling. Deliverance for Chris. We pray <clears throat> strength for Ruth as she's almost at the end of her treatment, Lord. And for Victor as he's going to begin some, Lord. We ask that you would touch, deliver by your mighty power. You are our healer. Yeah. So we pray also for baby Judah now. We ask God that you would touch him that you would strengthen his little lungs, that you would, you, unlike many other uh, physicians, you know exactly what's going on. So, Lord, we, uh, we come before you to uh, make our requests known. And uh, we thank you that you are faithful, God. We ask that you would move and touch him, give strength to mom and dad in this time, and we give you praise for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> All right, we're going to jump into the Word. So today, I'm going to try to wrap up Galatians chapter 5. So because you're going to be so late getting out of here today, I have pizza coming. Don't worry about it. You guys, will, not everybody's happy about that. <clears throat> you guys will be able to have some pizza with the pastor today. Um, remember, as we look at the book of Galatians, it divides into three parts. <clears throat> Part one, summary of the gospel the crucified Messiah, chapters 1 and 2. Then we see what this gospel has done. It has united all ethnicity into one family of Jesus and Abraham. And thirdly, 
This gospel transforms people by the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. That's chapters 5 and 6. So <clears throat> the challenge in the first half of chapter 5 uh, was for, uh, for us to stand firm in our freedom. Stand firm in your freedom. And that's not freedom to flesh, but freedom to walk in the Spirit. That will be developed a little bit more as we continue on. We were reminded that the law demands total commitment, not partial commitment. So circumcision is just a piece. If you're not going to keep the whole law, then you should step out of the whole law. Total commandment or total commitment. And then we're warned not to fall from grace because if we turn to the, to the law as Savior, we're stepping away from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, 3 and 4 says, I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision. He is obligated to keep the whole of the law. <clears throat> uh, you are severed from Christ. You who will be justified by the law, you have fallen away from grace. So those were the th a little... Reminder of the things we discussed last time. We jump in. I'm going to back up a couple verses just so we can uh, um, try to solidify the concept as we move into the, the battle between the flesh and the spirit. In verse 13, we'll pick it up. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love to serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. Now, I love it. All preachers do this. The whole law is fulfilled in one word, and then we use seven. Right? How many? One, two, three, four, five. Say, so, yeah, I got seven. ESV uses seven to do it. One word. What's the one word? Love, love is the one word. What is? Later on, we're going to see the fruit of the Spirit. That word fruit is singular. It doesn't say fruits. It says fruit, singular, one fruit of the Spirit. What's the fruit of the Spirit? Love. Love, okay, right. And so we understand that all the law breaks down into two parts, love God and love your neighbor. And that's the point that is being made here. The whole law is fulfilled in loving. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out, you will be consumed. Now, the attitude, keep in mind, in Galatia is you have two ethnic groups. They're a little diverse. You have Gentiles and you have Jews. And as they come together, there's been this battle over what of each culture should be a part of what it means to be a Christian. And so the challenge from Jewish brothers has gone out that they need to uh, adhere to circumcision. And so Paul's been dealing with this, this division within them, and he wants them to understand the point is not to go backwards to the old covenant, but to move forward under the new. And when we move forward under the new, the point is not you're free to do whatever you want, but you're actually free to walk in love, which ultimately does what? It fulfills the law. The question is, where's the power come from? The letter of the law could produce no power to change anybody's heart. But listen to what the scripture tells us in Romans chapter 5. In Romans chapter 5, it says, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, that's, a, that's the position of every believer. If you have trusted Christ, as your Lord and Savior, then you have been justified by faith. We have peace with God. So before we were justified by faith, we had what? War. That's what the Bible says. Our normal position without Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior is war against God. Only two categories of people. Those at war with God, those at peace with God. Believers, unbelievers. So as we look at the scripture, he says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access. That's access before God. Remember, what, when Jesus died on the cross, what was torn? Now, who went back and sewed it up? Yeah, well, they shouldn't have. Right? 
Once that veil is torn, what was God saying? By faith you have access to God, which is what we're, here, we're reading here in Romans 5. Uh, he says by, uh, you have access by faith into the grace, the unmerited favor of God in which we now stand. This is what he's describing for us. And we rejoice. We rejoice over what God has done for us in hope of the glory of God. Right where we are looking for and loving the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only that, not only do we rejoice in that, we rejoice in our suffering. Oh, wait a minute. I was with you till then. He says, no, we rejoice in suffering. Why, why is it that we're rejoicing in suffering? We know our suffering produces something. See, there's a lot of things I can do, endure if I know the why. Why am I going through this? When I was in the Marine Corps, we were going through the last day of boot camp, which is a bad day. If you've been there, you know. And uh, yeah, if you know, you know. I'm not going to tell you about it. But if I didn't know that the whole point of this day was so I could get out of here, I'd want to quit somewhere on that mountain. But you know you have to endure to get to the graduation ceremony. You know you need to endure. What is the point of our suffering? Knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces character. It's changing you, the things you go through. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And what's our hope for? Hope does not put us to shame. Hope is not going to disappoint you. Why? Because God's love is poured into your heart. What is poured into your heart? God's love. Deuteronomy 30, verse 6. God told the children of Israel, you know what you guys need? Circumcision of the heart. Well, what is regeneration? Circumcision of the heart. And what's God put in there? His love. What, what does he want us to walk in the spirit? So we can walk what? In love. And if we walk in love, is it that we're just doing whatever the flesh wants? No. If we're walking in love, we fulfill the law. You get it? So we're being empowered by God to do the thing God's calling us to do. That's what Romans 5 is declaring. The love of God is poured out into our hearts, dumped, poured, gushing. It's poured out through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us so that we might fulfill the law with that one word, love. So we don't go backwards to the letter. We go forward to the Spirit. Everybody tracking with me? Old covenant is over. New covenant has come. The new covenant in Christ, the promise of a new heart from Ezekiel. The very promise in Jeremiah 31 that was given to the nation of Israel that they experienced at Pentecost. Right? As the Spirit was given, as the men who had pierced him cried out to Peter, what must we do to be saved? And Peter said, repent and believe, for this promise is not just to you, but to who else? To your children. What about their children? Yeah, them too. Your children and your children's children and your children's children's children. To as many as will believe, all who will come. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord, Romans 10, 13 says, shall be same. So this is the call, right? To walk not according to the flesh. I want you to see the comparison that Paul's given so we don't get lost. The law is not bad. The law is not this or that. The law was, was a, a, a tutor to guide Israel to Messiah. Now Messiah is here. So we leave the tutor, right? And are you going back to kindergarten? I'll come. Well, you finished kindergarten. Anybody going back to high school? Lord, no. <laughs> How come we're not going back to high school? We're finished with high school. This is why we don't go back to the law. Are we tracking? We move forward with Jesus Christ. We're walking together with Jesus Christ into the spirit-filled 
life, the antidote to license is not laws. It is walking in the Spirit, being led by the Spirit. Look at verse 16, Galatians 5. But I say, walk by the Spirit. And what's the next phrase? And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. What did, what did Paul write in Romans chapter 6? He's, should we who have died to sin live any longer therein? We continue in our sin that grace would abound? Is that how we live? No. Why not? Because we're walking in the spirit that has been given to us by Christ. He's poured the love of God into our heart through the Holy Spirit. He's given us the power now to follow him. So what I do is positive, not negative. When I coached kids at football, I used to yell at them all the time not to fumble. You know what they did? They fumbled. I started saying, take care of the ball. And just changing the phrase I used lowered the amount of fumbles they had. If you focus on not gratifying the desires of the flesh, you're going to fail. What's he tell us to focus on? Walk in the Spirit. He's going he's gonna to tell us what that looks like in a moment. That's where our focus needs to be, not in, you know what, I need, I'm going to stop cussing. Lord, I promise I'm going to stop cussing. Oops, I cussed. And I did it right in front of the preacher again. And then you feel like you have to tell me, sorry. Just so you know, I have an autistic son I live with at home who can string words together like you would not believe. So you're, you're not going to offend me. The point is we don't focus on the negative, you focus on the positive. I'm going to walk in the spirit. Now there's an attitude of walking in the spirit he's going to describe. He says now in verse 17, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit. Has everybody realized that? It's not natural to walk in the Spirit, is it? It's foreign. It's a foreign idea in, inside us. Our body rebels. The desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. Can you do both at the same time? Can you walk in the Spirit and gratify the desires of the flesh at the same time? No. So if I'm doing one, what am I not doing? I'm not doing the other, right? If I'm doing one... I'm not doing the other. This is the point that he's making. These are opposed to one another to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But listen, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, this gets quoted bad all the time. Every time somebody says something like, you shouldn't do that, and somebody else says, I'm not under the law. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah but you might be in the flesh right now. <laughs> the point is, you cannot walk in the letter of the law and in the spirit. The point is, you gotta, you've got to choose to walk in that which is the source of your power to change. You can't walk in, if you sit down and you make a list of all the things you're never gonna do again, and that's your focus, there's no power in that list. There's power in the blood of Christ. There's power in the love of God that's been poured out into your life by the Holy Spirit. There's power walking in the Spirit, not according to the letter of the law. Uh, Mike Wall likes to say this phrase, and I, I like it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to I'm going to quote in the, and talk about the scripture in a moment, and and well, I'll, I'll, what what am I trying to say? <laughs> I'm already telling too many stories. So this is Mike's this is Mike's phrase. He says, "I'm in Romans seven, trying to get to Romans eight. You guys read Romans seven before? So Romans seven describes for us, in particular, a Jew under the law, but it also kind of highlights what it's like to try to focus on following the letter, right? You guys know the part Paul says, I'm not doing what I ought to do, the things I know I should do, those things I don't do. Are you guys tracking with me? 
And so Romans 7, we're going to look at it. Romans 7, 17 to 25, just briefly. Paul writes, it's no longer I who do it, but sin who dwells within me. For I know that nothing good in me dwells, that's in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what's right, but not the ability to carry it out. Following the letter of the law, there's no power. You, can, you guys know the difference between knowing what's right and doing what's right? Those are, have you ever, anybody figured out there's two different things? I can know what I ought to do, but uh, I don't always do it. This is what Paul's describing. Now, specifically, culturally, this is very Jewish because they're under the law. And in, in the book of Romans, he's contrasting often between Gentiles and Jews. In chapter 7, he's, he's going to bring them to the fullness of chapter 8. Hey, here's what we have in Christ this is, it kind of parallels what we're looking at here a little bit. So let's look at it. Verse 19, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I, but sin who dwells in me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight to, be, to, to do the law of God. Anybody want to please God? Yeah, we want to please God. Yeah, this is what Paul's saying. I delight to do the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members, in my body, another law waging, raging against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of death? Now, do we know the answer to that question? Yes. Jesus Christ has delivered us and empowered us. Stop focusing on that which you do not want to do and focus instead on what it is he has given you. Lay hold of all that you have in the spirit. Thanks be to God, Paul says, through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then I might... I myself serve the law of God with my mind, but my flesh, the law of sin. And then, that's not where Paul ends, right? You can't just stop in seven. Nobody should ever stop in seven. We go to eight. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. How much condemnation? None. No, he, you are utterly free. Why? Because you died with him. What did Paul say in Galatians 2.20? I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. In the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I died with Christ and I was raised with him to new life, a new creation. There is now therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin he condemned sin, in order that the righteous requirement of the law could be fulfilled in us. What did he just say? The righteous requirement of the law is fulfilled in us? How is that so? Who walk according, not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For love fulfills the law. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal from him. Are you tracking? Our ability to be obedient to what God is. So the question that, that Paul's getting to in Galatians chapter 5, who are you controlled by? Who are you controlled by? If you're controlled by the law, then that falls back to the flesh. If you're controlled by the Spirit, now you're empowered by the Spirit of God who changes you, transforms you from a child of wrath to a child of the King. Those are two different things. Amen? I, for one, am blessed that that is the truth of God's word. The result of what Paul's getting to here is if you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Therefore, you're not subject to the rule of sin and death. 
the law's hold over you, describing you as guilty, is over. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You've not only uh, been set free, you are declared not guilty. That's, that's what Jesus Christ has done for us. So that transforms us. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are what? The sons of God. All who are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Let's go on. Galatians 5.19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. I break these into three categories. Here are my three categories. Sexual malpractice. Worship malpractice, social malpractice. All of this list is focused inward on the person and is all about self. That's why it's in opposition to Christ. So first we have the first three under sexual malpractice. Three Greek words. I'm going to talk about the Greek words because all of our Bibles use a different word to describe it. So let's try to nail it down a little bit. The first word is pornea. It is, it is literally sex with a prostitute. It has come to mean all sex outside of marriage. Any immoral sexual act. We track in. The second word, akatharsia. Still dealing with sins of a sexual nature. It means you are morally impure. Morally impure and aselgia. The third word means to cast off restraint. Anybody think of a better way to describe our world today? No? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It is a world full of sexual malpractice. Those are works of the flesh. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality. Then we have worship malpractice. The next two words, idolatry and sorcery. Idolatry and sorcery. This, is, this was the word of the world of the Gentiles that they came out of. So we have worship malpractice. And then we have social malpractice. This is a, a variety of words to describe the horrible things we do to one another. Yeah, it's everywhere. He begins with... Um, Enmity. I love that word, enmity, because it's the same word that describes how we were before we were in Christ. Scripture says that you were at enmity with God. Do you know what that word means? Full scale war. Not minor league war, full scale war. What's a, what, how does he describe this a social malpractice? You ever seen neighbors at full-scale war with one another? Yes, you have. You ever been at full-scale war with your neighbor? You should stop it if you are. You don't want to say that now in church because in a minute, I'm going to say you're supposed to love your neighbor, right? This is what's being described, full-scale war. The next word, strife. Strife is a violent discord. All of these things deal with the inability to communicate in a way that is not bringing a pipe. Now, I don't mean a smoking pipe. I mean like a lead pipe. You know, to bring the exclamation points to your argument. Strife. Strife is violent discord. Jealousy. It means fierce partisanship. You ever seen a world more tribal than our world today? We find a lot of things to get tribal over. Maybe you are saying, I don't know, my tribe's pretty good. Well, you know what? The call of God when he said to go that we prayed for earlier in prayer was to go to all tribes everywhere and bring them Christ and bring them into one family where the people are known for how they love one another. Interesting to think of it in terms like that, no? Fits of anger. 
That's outbursts of rage, thumios. Yeah, that word comes up in Revelation a few times. Thumios, outburst, total uh, rage pouring out. Then you have rivalries, which is the first of a couple of plural words, which mean um, selfish ambitions, right? Well, my way is more important than your way, so get out of the way. Uh, rivalries, dissensions, dissensions, a word that comes to mean demonizing the views of others. Uh-oh. Divisions. You know that word, division? It's interesting. It's the word, the Greek word for heresy. Divisions. It's utilized contextually like isolating, building your own islands, uh, building the wall, hiding within, separating yourself from everything and everyone. Envy. That means gnawing resentment. Oops. Drunkenness, I should not have to explain. You all learned it in high school. <laughs> and hopefully you've grown up since then. And if you're in high school, stop it. Then the next word, orgies, it just has a word that means wild parties, a focus on partying the life away. And then just in case you would think this is a total list, how does he end it? He says, and other things like these. So this is not exhaustive. This is the works of the flesh, and they're evident because they're self-absorbed. They are self-focused. They are narcissistic, and they are prominent in the hearts and minds of mankind. And so he declares, he makes a declaration after all of this, the danger of these things. Those who do such things. You see that phrase? Those who do such things. That means a settled and continuous practice. Not those who struggle with such things, those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to hear that in a little different light. Because the kingdom of God is already and not yet. There's a sense in which the kingdom of God is here. And there is a sense in which the kingdom of God is coming. And it means in both. That means... If this is who you are, if this describes how you want to live your life and who you are, if this is your reality, then you're not part of the community of Christ. You're not, in essence, he's saying, if this is where you are, this is your life, you're not saved. Because you can't be in both kingdoms at one time. You are either in the kingdom of Christ or in the kingdom of God. Now, please listen. You remember the first part? Because the, the people who are running rampant over what I just said are ignoring the first part. Not those who struggle. You guys know the difference between struggle and practice? Struggle and practice, two different things. So it's not talking about struggling um, uh, occasionally falling into sin. No, that's okay. That's part of life. We confess, we repent, and we move on. Amen? We don't live there anymore. If you're living there, you do not belong to Christ. You are not now in his kingdom, and you are not headed for his kingdom in the future. That's important. What is the call of Scripture to us? Repent and believe. Ephesians chapter 2, I read it to you guys, uh, I think, on, over, over Easter. We talked about it, right? We were once children of wrath, but we're not children of wrath anymore. Why? Because I was dead in Christ, but Jesus Christ made me alive together with him. I, I not only died with Christ by calling upon his name, I died to Christ, but what else happened? I rose with him. 
I died with Christ, and I died to my old life, and I rose to a new life, new creation created in Christ Jesus. Amen? So if we're a new creation, we don't live in that old kingdom anymore. We live in the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Everybody tracking? It's an important concept for us to make sure that we have. Now, I, don't, I, I want to finish the next part. I can't, we can't just talk about the works of the flesh. We've got to get to the, the reason we're here. But the fruit of the Spirit, singular word, right? Everybody sees it. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. Yeah, we just need to walk in the Spirit. I know if I'm not walking in the Spirit because I, my things that I'm thinking and desiring to do look more like the list I had just read before. What is it that we're called to? We're called to love. Now, everybody is so worried about how they love people out in the world. Let's maybe not worry about that so much right now. Why don't you just try to love the people you're in the building with? We'll get to loving the people in the world, but Jesus said that they out there will know you are his disciple by how you love each other. So we'll, I'm not saying don't ever love your neighbor. Obviously, we know the Bible calls us to love our neighbor, but you, you need to be able to love the brethren. This is the brethren. So we, we need to walk in love of the brethren. And if there are brethren you don't love, and do yourself a favor, don't say, well, I love them, but I don't like them. I don't know how that works. <laughs> That's a nice thing that we tell ourselves so you don't have to reconcile. You say that to Christ? Well, I love Christ, but I don't like him. Yeah? If you're not going to say it to Christ, then you probably shouldn't say it to your brother. How's that? So, we have the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Kind, what's that word? Kind, you're kidding me. I got to be nice? Every time I'm going to, I'll go out on a limb. Every time I make my wife angry at me, it's over that word. It's just that word. Kind, be kind. Familiarity doesn't just breed contempt. Familiarity makes you unkind. Don't do that. Focus on walking in the spirit. Walk in love. Be kind. You can say hard things kindly, can't you? Yes. You'll know because they don't want to hear what you're saying, but you're not screaming or yelling or stomping your, your feet. The, that vein in the middle of your forehead's not bursting. Yes, everybody has one of those. We can all tell when you're angry, just so you know. We want to walk in the Spirit. And those who belong to Christ, he says, have crucified the flesh. That goes back to what we've been quoting in Galatians chapter 2. I have been crucified with Christ. I'm dead to the old life. I'm living a new life. I'm living a life in Christ, and that life in Christ is led by the Spirit who puts the love I need to express to others in my life. So as you can't say you don't have it. God gave it to you. He gave it to you. He poured that love into your life. In Colossians chapter 3, Verse 5, it says, Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of the wrath of God is coming. On account of these things, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you used to live in them, but now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you put off the old self with its practices and have put on Christ. You have put on the new self, a new creation, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. That means you're becoming like Jesus, amen? That's our goal. 
Here there is not Greek or Jew, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. Christ is all and in all. That's our focus. Verse 25 says, for if we live by the Spirit, you better line up. You see this phrase here, you live by the Spirit, you need to stay in step with the Spirit. We had a way of doing this in the Marine Corps. Yeah, it's a very military term. It's a term for a formation, a lineup. Line up. You know how easy it is to tell if one guy's out of step in a lineup? You know how easy it is to tell in a lineup whether somebody's not lined up? It's not hard. I know when you were a little kid, you used to wonder, how is it the teacher knows I'm messing around? <laughs> well, because you're not in line, dude. You're sticking out. You used to think how, how amazing that they have eyes in the back of their head. No, not necessarily. You're not lined up. When he says, stay in step with the Spirit, he's saying, line up on him. Line up on the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit to the measure of Christ. That's our goal. And then he gives us a warning before we jump into the rest in chapter 6, which we will not do. But here's what he says. Let us, be, let us not become conceited, provoking one another, or envying one another. Now, I want to define these three terms a little better before we close. Let us not become conceited. That means do not glory in emptiness. Do not glory in emptiness. It's not about you. It is about Christ. We glory in Christ, not in you. Not in me. We glory in Christ. Do not become conceited first. Don't have that attitude. Number two, do not provoke one another. That word for provoking means do not make claims of superiority. Oh, man. You're not better than that person that you're sitting next to or the one behind you or in front of you or across the room from you. So don't provoke one another by making claims of moral superiority. Do not make claims to superiority and do not envy the third word. The third word, which means do not see claims of superiority in others. You know how you envy others? You judge the outside with your inside. That never works. Right? The person you're looking at that you think has it all together has bad days just like you. The people of us that, that maybe are doing well, we have bad days too. Amen? And people who have bad days also have good days too, don't they? Yeah, this is not a question of elevating one person over another, but making a decision. I'm going to stay in step with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to walk in love. And I am going to focus rather on keeping the law on loving my brother and loving my neighbor. Expressing the love of Christ to one another and for one another. This is how we walk in the Spirit. Amen? Why don't you guys stand with me? Let's pray. Father God, we are thankful to be able to gather together in your house, God. To open our eyes and our ears to your word, the reading of your word. To open our eyes and our ears to the gathering together for prayer. To open our eyes and our ears to worship. We come together to give to you this day, this time that your spirit may minister to us, encourage us so that we can go throughout this next week and be the men and women you're calling us to be. God, I thank you that you have not left us orphans, but you have given us your spirit. I thank you that you have poured your love into my heart so that I can choose to love my brother. So God, I want 
your heart in place of mine. So, God, I want your eyes in place of mine. So, God, I want to be able to see and express things to my brothers and to my neighbor as I walk in the Spirit, how you would express it. Help me to speak your words after you. Help me to feel the passion for the loss that you feel. Help me to know the compassion you have for the hurting so that I might have compassion for the hurting. Help me, God, to burn the old man in his clothes and stand as a new creation because you've already made me one. That, them, old, them old clothes, maybe they're comfortable, but they got to go. Help me stand in newness of life in the kingdom of of light with the king of kings and the lord of lords that you God would be glorified in how I follow you help us Lord be the men and women you're calling us to be and we give you all the praise and the glory for it in Jesus name we pray amen let's do our doxology now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time, now, and forever. Amen. God bless you guys. Don't forget. Pizza with the pastor, cake with Drew, and we have folks up front to pray with you if there's things you need prayer for. God bless you and go in peace. <laughs>